ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم we always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him and we send blessings upon the last and final messenger of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we bear witness that all guidance stems and comes from Allah and his book and everything else is a deviation from the truth and we are reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the whole Quran when he says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun oh you who believe that means all of us over here if you truly believe in Allah then please fear him revere him be conscious of him because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of all conscious and that is where the true success lies so please i advise you as i advise myself to fear Allah be conscious of Allah and never deviate from that truth today's khutbah of course will be very short straight to the point and we're going to be talking about three main lessons that come from the battle of the trench which was one of the islamic battles that we had when the quraysh was attacking the muslims You see, the Muslims were small, very small in number, similar to what we have right now. The majority was not Muslims. The you know Muslims were the minority, very similar to what we have right now. And um, the Quraysh were trying to attack the Muslims, the Lintan Mount in Medina. The Muslims obviously have been through a lot of other wars. They have some skills. They have some tactics. But this time it was a little more different. This time they decided that they were going to build a trench. And how did they build this trench? That's what the lesson is about today. The first lesson that we learn from the building of this trench is that every one of us has a gift. Every single one of us, including you and I, every single one of us has a gift. And it is your responsibility and my responsibility to reflect within ourselves enough to figure out what our gifts are. And whatever our gifts are it is your responsibility and my own responsibility to beautify those gifts and use those gifts for the sake and in the direction of Allah. You see our gifts should be celebrated and that's what the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so amazing at. He was not only amazing at recognizing people's gifts before they even recognized their own, he was amazing at allowing people to apply their gifts and talents for the sake of Allah in the direction of Islam. There was a companion who was from Persia. Persians were extremely backwards. And they were fire worshippers. He had strove for the truth and finally found the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, I bring Allah to him. And while the Muslims were deliberating between how can we defend us ourselves how can we defend our city he came and told them that look I'm going to give you a strategy that my countrymen and my you know the people who were strategic for the wars used to use here's that strategy we used to dig a trench upon hearing this the messenger saw it and said that's a great idea you see a lot of times we come from different backgrounds and different cultures And sometimes if we're not the same culture or the same background we usually pay them no mind. But the messenger saw some is teaching us one thing that no matter where you're from, whatever your skin color might be, whatever your age might be, you bring something to the table. And it is our responsibility as leaders to figure out how can we apply people's gifts? How can we use our own gifts and apply them for the ummah? If you are someone who is an awesome, uh, you know, artist, You love the arts. How can you apply that within the parameters of Allah to use it for the deen of Allah? That is your responsibility to figure out. How can you use your gifts, your talents for the sake of Allah? That's the first lesson that we learn. That everyone brings a gift, and when you apply it for the sake of Allah, your gift is beautified, and it helps the deen of Allah succeed, which is going to be successful either way. The second lesson that we learn from the battle of the trench. is that true leadership doesn't come from top down leadership where i tell the managers to do something and then they carry out the rules or the orders while i sit down and do nothing absolutely not when the battle of the trench happened and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw the muslims digging the trench he did not sit back he did not just sit down and watch them and give orders absolutely not 
The messenger saw Sunnah rolled up his own sleeves and got in there and started digging himself. We learn from this that true leaders get their hands dirty. They don't just sit back and just tell you commands and give you orders to do while they themselves sit there scot free. No way. True leaders get down with you. They are really with you in the trenches. Indeed, the messenger saw Sunnah was should have been the one who was this phrase coined after. When the leader's in the trenches with you. Because that's who he was, a leader who was always with his people, rolling up his sleeves, doing the dirty work just like everyone else was, and not just sitting down and just waiting for things to happen and change. So if you're a true leader, your job is to be with your community and get your hands dirty and do the work in as well. That's the second thing we learn from the Battle of the Trench. Inshallah, after this, we're going to continue with the third lesson as well. I think we all have to stop the very quickly, we're going to summarize the first two lessons that we learned. The first lesson is that you all have a gift, you all have a talent, and it is your responsibility to determine what that gift is, what that talent is, and apply it and go and fully double down on that gift and talent. And apply it in the direction and for the sake of Allah. Apply that gift, that talent for the deen of Allah. That is your responsibility to figure out what your gift and talent is. And if you think that you don't have a gift and talent, you need to sit down and reflect a little harder because you all have one. Allah blessed you. Second thing we learned. That true leaders, a true sign of leadership is not just giving orders, it's actually the people seeing that you're getting in the trench working with the people. You're actually helping them out. You're not just giving them rules and orders and telling them to figure it out or sort it out. No, you're actually with them in the battles, in the wars, and you're actually helping out yourself. The third and final thing that we learn from the Messenger Sallallahu and overall story of the Battle of the Trench is never think that you're doing more than others. Sometimes we work so hard that we begin to think that we're working harder than the other people around us. We begin feeling entitled. You might go home and have a fight with your spouse, might fight with your siblings. Do you not understand what kind of day I had today? I had to do this, I had to do this, I had to do this. We start feeling entitled thinking that our days are the worst. We start thinking our problems are the biggest. We start thinking that our struggles are the hardest. No. One thing that we learned from the battle of the trench is that never ever think that you're doing more than other people around you because other people are working harder than you. Just the problem is that you don't see it. The only thing is that you don't see how hard they're working. You think that you are the hardest worker, but there's other people who are serving the deen of Allah and who are working harder than you are. So stop feeling entitled. Stop thinking that you are the hardest worker. Your day was the worst. Because other people are having more days than you, but the only difference is that they don't feel entitled about it and they're not complaining about it like us. We learn this when the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi goes into the trench and the companions show the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam their, their devotion, their persistence, their hunger, showing how hard they're working to dig that trench. They show the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by lifting up their, 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 their shirts that they have a stone tied on their belly. Showing the Messenger of Allah, we love the Deen of Allah, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love the Messenger of Allah. Look what we're doing. Look at this, we're, we're, we're striving to save Allah, what a beautiful thing they're doing. Guess what? The Messenger of Allah pulled up his shirt and showed he had two stones tied on his. Never think you're outworking others. There's someone who's outworking you every single day. If you think you're having a bad day, there's someone else who's having a worse day than yours. Be grateful. Stop feeling entitled about everything. The Messenger Sallallahu is teaching us that if you think that you're working hard, there's someone working harder than you. He had two stones tied to his belly. What are you and I doing? That's something that we all have to reflect about. The three lessons are the following. Every one of us have a gift and a talent. Figure out what's your gift and talent and see how you can apply that to the deen of Allah. Second lesson. True leadership means rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty and actually going in and putting in the work and not just giving orders to other people to do stuff. It means you getting it done. And the third and final thing that we learn from this story is that never think that you're outworking and doing more than others. Be hungry 
being hungry, literally working hard, always working hard. And when you think you've worked hard, when you think you've done more, when you think you can't do any more, remember this, that the messenger saw Salam was praying in the middle of the night, and his feet became sore and they were hurting. And the mother of the believers asked the messenger of Allah that why are you still doing this? Why are you pushing it to that degree? Why are you in that gear right now, working so hard? Why? You're guaranteed paradise. You're scot-free. There's nothing. There's no sin you've ever committed. Everything is wiped away. There's no sin you'll ever commit in the future. You're guaranteed paradise. Why still do this? And the messenger saw some declared and repose a rhetorical question to the mother of the believer, stating, shouldn't I be a grateful slave? And I want you to remember this. The moment you start thinking that you are tired, the moment that you start thinking that I've worked hard enough, the moment you start thinking I've studied for that exam enough, the moment you start thinking that I've worked hard enough, remember something, that gratitude is your source of energy. Gratitude towards Allah. If you think you've worked hard, work a little harder. If you think you've achieved, achieve a little more. Because the messenger of Allah never stopped achieving. The messenger of Allah never became complacent. So you and I have zero excuses. We ask Allah SWT to bless us. We ask Allah SWT to forgive us, forgive us as well. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamdun jeeed. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim.